Afternoon everybody and welcome to another one of DMU's live stream. This live stream is all around our brand new um, courses. So that is our solicitor qualifying exam preparation for law grads and also for non-law grads as well. Um, this course is a brand new course starting in September 2021 and um, is replacing the graduate diploma in law for the non-law grads and will eventually replace the legal practice course. Now we know that a lot of questions have come from these new programmes and that's why we wanted to put this live stream together. So we're going to be talking about the differences between the two programmes and why this new course is is now here and everything surrounding like that. So if you are watching and you want to um, let us know you're watching, ask any questions around the SQEs or the LPC, then just drop us a comment and let us know. Now, I am no expert on any of these programmes, so I had to bring along a couple of experts. So we have senior lecturer in law, Kelly. Hi, everyone. Hi. You're OK, Kelly? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. We've had a few tech issues so far, so I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping they're going to be OK. Um, we do also have another one of our colleagues on the line as well, and that is Patty. And Patty is also a senior lecturer in law. Um, at the moment, Patty's experiencing some technical issues. So what we'll do is we'll hopefully in the backstage, Patty will get those sorted and we can bring her on a little bit later. So to start off with, um, Kelly, whilst we're sort of waiting for Patty to join us, I think kind of a good place to start is what is the SQE? Where has this come from? Um, I know it's a lot. It's a question that you've been receiving quite a lot from students. So I was wondering if you could just introduce it a little bit to us. Yeah. So this uh, SQE stands for Solicitors Qualifying Examination. So the traditional route to becoming a solicitor is changing. So the current route that's in place is that you do your law degree and then your LPC and then your, your training. Um, if you haven't done a law degree, then you do a degree, your graduate diploma in law, and then your LPC. And that is changing. So the route is moving to doing a, uh, a, a degree and then doing an, an SQE, which is a centralised assessment. The courses that we are bringing in are um, preparatory courses. So courses that will allow you or prepare you for the SQE centralised assessment, whilst also gaining an LLM. So both of the courses, regardless of whether it is a non-law graduate SQE LLM or a law graduate SQE LLM, they both will um, bring about a master's. So the change has already started. So as Georgia said, the GDL has already been phased out. Um, so the only route now available to you is by doing an SQE LLM. For those students who have done a law degree, there is still the uh, opportunity to go via the legal practice course route. Um, and then, as Georgia said, from September next year, there will also be the option of going the SQE route. And eventually, the LPC will be phased out, it won't exist anymore, and the only route to becoming a solicitor will be taking this SQE centralised assessment. Now, this is a decision that's not obviously been made by um, is at the university. Um, this is made or decision that's been made by the Solicitors Regulation Authority. And it's been something that's been in the pipeline now for a number of years. Um, and like I said, next year there will be an LPC um, and SQE kind of running alongside each other. But eventually the LPC is going to be phased out over the next couple of years and the only route to become a solicitor will be via the SQE centralised exam. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, so just going back to the why the decision was taken to move from sort of like the LPC to the SQE, is it? And it's a question that's just sort of from my own curiosity. Is it um, is that is the SQE harder, or is it is it just different in the way that you're sort of assessed? It's just it's predominantly um, different to how you're going to be assessed. So um, 
on the LPC currently, you're assessed internally at each individual institution. So if you were to do your LPC at De Montfort University, you'd be assessed at De Montfort University. The SQE is a different way of being assessed um, in that it's moving to a centralised um, provider. But also um, the way that you're going to be assessed is different. So you move from um, kind of essay style questions and answers to more of the best, it's like a multiple choice, but they call it best answer. Um, so you'll be given a, a scenario, a selection of responses, and you need to choose the best answer. So that's essentially the SQE assessment. And what we aim to do as part of our preparatory course is provide you with as many opportunities to test your knowledge, to use your knowledge, to be able to answer these questions when you go to take the SQE uh, centralised assessment. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, so as we mentioned, there are two programmes. And as we said, we're going to be here for like the next hour. So if you do have any questions for Kelly on the SQE or anything we're talking about, please just drop us a comment and we'll get those answered for you. Because I can see there's a few people watching. So please get your uh, questions answered. So as we mentioned, Kelly, starting from September 2021, there's going to be two programmes. So there's two sort of slight variations of the programme. We have the Solicitors Qualifying Exam Preparation for Law Graduates, LLM, and then also the same course but for non-law graduates. So I just wanted to take a little bit of time because I know um, you sort of have quite a lot of knowledge about the Law Graduates Programme. Just to talk us a little bit, if you can give us an overview as to what that programme is. Yeah, so essentially you could probably break it down even further than the two courses in that each course, so the um, SQE LLM for Law Graduates, and the SQE LLM for non-law graduates is also broken down further into um, one year campus-based SQE LLM or a two years part-time on-law online course. Um, but I'm going to take you through the SQE um, LLM course for law graduates first. So like I said, it's one year campus-based full-time or two years um, online-based uh, part-time. The course is split into um, two semesters. So the full time semester one is October to January and the part time semester one is year one. So in semester one, all students will study the same courses. And I'm just going to have a look down to my notes just to make sure I don't miss anything. So um, they will study dispute resolution, uh, business law and practice, legal services, property law and practice, criminal law and practice, and wills and estates. So all students will study those same subjects between October and January for full time or uh, during year one for part time. At the end of semester one, all students will be assessed on uh, the semester one topics. And they are two hours, closed book exams, and they will be a mixture of um, an essay style question, but also um, including some of the uh, style questions that you would get in the SQE centralised assessment. Semester two um, starts February, March time, depending on how, how the year falls um, and ends at the end of May. In semester two, all students will study skills for legal practice. So all students will study that one module. Skills for legal practice will cover um, drafting, writing, advocacy, interviewing and, uh, interviewing and advising, research um, and negotiation. So all students will cover those skills um, in the legal skills module. In addition, students will be able to choose three electives. And there are a number of electives, and I'm gonna look down now, definitely, because I don't wanna miss any out. So the electives that, can be ch uh, that you can choose from um, include employment law, personal injury and clinical negligence, child law, family law and practice, intellectual property law and practice, commercial property law and practice, commercial litigation, sport and media law, private client law and practice, advanced criminal practice, immigration law and practice, 
and legal technology. So you can choose three from that, that list that I've just given. At the end of semester two, you will be assessed on your three electives. So that will be again, another two hour closed book assessment for each of those modules. Um, and that will be um, in the form of an essay style question um, and then some short form SQE style questions. These skills, so the advocacy, interviewing and advising, writing, uh, research, uh, negotiation and drafting is assessed by way of a portfolio. And the portfolio is handed in after your semester two assessments. So that's an overview of the law graduate course, um, the SQE LLM for law graduates. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, I know that you've been speaking for quite a while, so we do have a question from another <laughs> Kelly. So um, I will give you a moment to have a drink if you need one. Um, <laughs> and also, I don't think anyone feels, I think it was definitely the wise I, the decision to have it, all your notes wrote, because how you were supposed to remember <laughs> all those elective modules, no one feel, no one blames you for writing those down. Um, so we have a question from Kelly. Thank you very much for joining us today, Kelly, and watching. So Kelly would like, Kelly is unsure if she needs to apply for an LPC slash SQE for next year now, um, and if she should also apply for training contracts for the year after as well. What advice would you give to Kelly? Um, so I would say that if you are um, a third year student, then you should be applying for the um, an SQE or an LPC um, in the kind of forthcoming months. Um, and I know that at Montfort University, our postgraduate professional courses are extremely popular. Um, so I would encourage you to do that sooner rather than later. In regards to choosing between the SQE or the LPC, um, there are some differences um, in how you are assessed, the length of it, uh, the assessments, the electives that are available to you. So my best advice is to do as much research as you can in regards to the LPC and the SQE. Another thing just to be aware of is that some firms are um, already saying that they will now only accept students who have done the SQE LLM. And there are some law firms who are saying, actually, we're still looking for students who have done the LPC. So you need to consider the firms that you're looking for. What I would say is most firms don't care either way. They don't care whether you've done the SQE or LLM as long as you've done, um, sorry, the SQE, LLM or the LPC, as long as you've done one or the other. In terms of applying for training contracts, um, it depends on the size of the firm that you're dealing with. So. I worked for a regional firm as a solicitor before before rejoining uh, De Montfort University, and you know they opened their training contract applications um, very kind of late on. So during the year that you're doing your LPC or your SQE, if you're looking to apply for a larger firm, so maybe a more national firm, then you would need to consider applying for those training contracts now. Hopefully that answers your question, Kelly, but if you do need any more information, then just drop us a comment and we'll get around to answering it as well. Um, I'm really sorry, I'm conscious you might be able to hear my dog snoring in the background. And I just, <laughs> I've just been like, that is so loud. So it's not, it's not me, I'm not snoring while I'm awake. It's, it's my dog who is snoring in the background. So apologies. Um, thank you very much, Kelly. I'm glad you, that, glad that, that answered your question. So going back to um, the SQE for law grads, Kelly. So we've spoken about an overview, and you touched on the the types of the types of modules. So talking about the core modules, um, yeah. can you just give a bit more sort of insight as to what they will be like learning about on those modules? Yeah, of course. Uh, not all of them, but I'll try. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> dispute resolution is um, civil litigation. So. Uh, it, just in different names. So it's dispute resolution. So you will be covering um, civil claims, um, usually breach of contract and um, a personal injury type claim. And it will, you will essentially be looking at how do you take a client who comes to you at the beginning um, of a matter um, with a problem? How do you take that client all the way through all the steps that you need to take to bring it to trial and after trial? So you'll essentially be following a claim from start to finish. 
Very similar um, is um, criminal law and practice. The only difference is you will be focusing on criminal uh, law and focusing on how you take a client who contacts you with a criminal case and how you take that case from the very start um, to the end of tr to the end to trial and, and thereafter. Property law and practice, you will be um, looking at how you um, run through a property transaction. So again, it's from when you first meet the client and all the initial considerations you need to have with that client at the start. And it's about taking that client through a whole property transaction. Um, in addition, you'll be looking at freeholds and leaseholds. So you'll be looking at purchasing um, and, and some leasehold uh, property stuff as well. Business law and practice, you'll be essentially, again, dealing with clients and looking at practically how can you assist a client, the advice that you should give if they've got um, questions about forming a company, forming a sole trader, uh, trader business um, or forming a partnership and the rules and regulations that govern how uh, sole trader businesses, partnerships and companies run. In wills and administration of estates, you will be looking at how are wills drafted and how are they then processed once a person passes away. You will be looking at um, how estates are distributed and you'll also be looking um, at what happens if a person passes away but doesn't have a will, what happens then? So we'll be looking at the rules of intestacy. The last one, which is probably the, the very different to the other modules is legal services. So the legal services module will take you through things like conduct. So solicitors have to adhere to conduct rules. Um, you will also be looking at um, some tax. You'll also be looking at solicitors accounts. So solicitors accountant, uh, the accountancy rules for solicitors um, are very different to um, other organisations and that's largely to do with the fact that solicitors deal with large sums of money um, on a daily basis. So that's a little bit about what you will be covering in each of those core modules in semester one. Thank you for that Kelly and I think one thing we just need to applaud you for then is working from home, we all know the Teams notifications <laughs> come through and you handled that, I just had to point out you handled that very well, I would have panicked. <laughs> um, I was like, I could hear like a team cleaning in the background, I thought it was coming out outside, from outside my office and I was like, oh no, it's actually coming from my laptop. Oh no, 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 it's someone's ringing me. <laughs> um, so we have a um, another question, if that's okay, Kelly. Yeah. Um, so ap um, apologies if I butcher your name, but Bav Bav she oh, I'm really sorry. Um, so Lisa? she, yeah. That's apologies if we have pronounced your name wrong. Let us know. I'm always trying to get this perfect first time, but I never do. Um, so she would like to know: Is the SQE prep course for law grads only for SQE? one in other words would we have to do another prep course for sqe2 and i've seen this question come up quite a few times actually so would you yeah so just for the uninitiated essentially the sqe centralized assessments will be in two parts so you have sqe1 um, which is fun functioning legal knowledge and then sqe2 is um then kind of uh, skills based so in reality uh, most of the course will be focused towards your SQE1 prep, okay? But you will be covering the skills that will be looked at in SQE2. So for law graduates, you will be looking at some of the stuff that you need for SQE2. The idea behind the SQE course, however, is that students will complete SQE1, then they will spend two years um, in up to six um, placement where you will learn more about the skills that you need for SQE2. So the SQE LLM for law grads will provide you with that base knowledge that you need um, in, in relation to drafting, writing, negotiation, all of those skills that I mentioned before. It could be the base knowledge that you need so you could go into a law firm um, or into a legal placement and, and kind of hit the ground running, but you will learn more whilst you're in practice that will work towards your SQE2 hope that answers your question again that is a question that we have 
stop seeing come up multiple times if you do need any more clarification or information on that please just drop us another comment and we'll get those answered as well um now kelly just correct me if i'm wrong but sort of one of the main differences between the um the law grad and the non-law grad sqe pro llm um is this entry is the um optional module so the elective modules so yeah. can you can you tell us a little bit more about like how people can go into those specialisms so i know you covered them earlier and there is an extensive list so please don't feel the free need to go through <laughs> all of them but just to give a bit of a sort of like why for example do the the, the law graduates get that opportunity yeah, yeah. so the non-law graduates um all sit only sit compulsory modules so they don't have the option of sitting elective so just to kind of give you an overview for non-law graduates um the in their first semester which is roughly roughly around the same time so kind of october to january they will be covering english legal systems contract tort public law land law um trusts and criminal law okay so that's what they will cover in semester one and then in semester two they will cover what the law grads cover in semester one so they will cover um dispute resolution uh, business law and practice property law and practice uh rules and administration of states criminal law and practice and legal services so semester one for non-law grads like i said is going to be those uh, those topics so english legal system contract or public law land law trusts and criminal law and then semester two will be um those those other topics those dispute resolution etc now the reason that non-law graduates don't uh study well the reason that non-law graduates firstly uh study slightly different topics and why they don't get the electives uh choices is because the idea of this preparatory course is to provide you with enough information to pass sqe1 okay so we're preparing you to sit SQE1 and SQE1 will cover all of the subjects that the non-law graduates will um, will study during their, their time with us. And we only have so many weeks and so many uh, so much time in, in an academic year um, and unfortunately there just isn't time to cover those electives. Um, so that's why non-law graduates cover uh, slightly different topics. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, and this is the reason that we are putting these live streams on because you are getting your questions answered. So this is the perfect opportunity. You have an academic here with us that is answering these questions that we we do know are confusing. Um, and this is going to be uh, hosted on YouTube as well um, for the foreseeable future. So you can come back and watch this uh, if needed. So um, just got a couple of questions in the comments, Kelly. And then what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and bring we're going to try and bring Patty back. If not, Kelly, it's your time to shine again. <laughs> um, so we have a question again from Kelly. Uh, so Kelly wants to know: the, Would the SQ would the SQE take longer than the LPC? Um, if if you mean in an academic year, um, they're about the same um in the sense that the lpc if anything the lpc i think is is just a smidge longer um so the lpc runs from the beginning of september through to the end of may with assessments in june whereas the sqe starts kind of right at the beginning of october or towards the beginning uh, towards the end of september um, and that finishes again in at the end of may and then assessments in june so the LPC is probably about two or three weeks longer. Fabulous. Hope that answers your um, question, Kelly. We have a question from Ellis. So Ellis wants to know, should I apply for the non-law grad or the law grad uh, course? I've already studied contract law, tort law, public law, trust law and criminal law, but not yet studied land law. Um, unfortunately, Ellis, I, I would suggest doing the non-law grad SQE. Um, I appreciate that you've studied all of these subjects, but land law is a, is a key subject that you, one, could be assessed on in the SQE centralised assessment. Um, and secondly, you would need to have the basics or the understanding of land law before you would move on to doing property law and practice. 
Um, so I would suggest on that information that you, you can see that if you're going to do the SQE, um, is to do the SQE non-law grad uh, course that's going to best prepare you for um, the SQE um, assessment. And I think that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about what would be best for you in terms of like how can you make these SQE ex um, exams most successful? Uh, if you have any more questions, as we say, please uh, pop them in. We're going to be here. 26 minutes have gone already. How quick has that gone, <laughs> Kelly? Um, so as I mentioned, we do have another law academic with us. Um, so I'm going to try and bring Patty back. Patty is one of our senior lecturers in law as well. Um, and she will be talking to us about the um, the solicitor's qualifying exam preparation for non-law grads, LLM. Um, as I say, if her connection does drop out, we'll change it up a little bit um, to give Kelly a little bit of a break. So let's see if this works. Hi, Patty, are you OK? It's always bound to happen. It always happens. Something goes wrong. Something goes wrong on a live stream. Um, no. OK, so we unfortunately we've lost Patty. Um, but don't worry if you do want information about the non-law, um, the non-law LLM, we will we will be talking about it. I think what we'll do before that is we will um, just to give Kelly a little bit of a breather, just to, just to get her ready to talk again about the a course and sort, sort of extents um, to talk about the, the next programme. What we'll do is I'm just going to play a little bit of video to showcase our law facilities. So is that all right with you, Kelly? If we just change it yeah. up a little bit, we'll play a video um, about our law facilities and then we'll come back, talk about those a little bit, and then we'll go into the non-law, the non-graduate. The solicitor's qualified exam preparation for non-law grads. They have not made this any easier to say. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to the Leicester de Montfort Law School. DMU law students have access to dedicated law facilities, including a law library, client interviewing room, and a mock courtroom. And you'll have access to the Crown Court of the historic Leicester Castle. This is the Hugh Aston Building, where you'll be taught. We have a range of lecture theatres and seminar rooms. This is an example of a seminar room. And this is the lecture theatre. This is our new £5.5 .5 million extension called The Yard and it has a new student advice centre. We also have extra learning spaces and resources. Want to find out more? Have a look on our website for more information or come and join us on one of our upcoming open days. So it didn't give you much of a breather, Kelly. Um, <laughs> but our, our law students, um, obviously I, I currently work within the Faculty of Business and Law as well as, as, well as Kelly does, um, and our law students have so many facilities available to them so some of them were mentioned on there such as the mock courtroom um and leicester castle business school and crown court um which i didn't actually know up until an event we ran recently it was like one of the first places they ever used dna testing which yeah, is yeah so dna actually came, dna testing actually uh, originates from leicester which to me i heard that on an event and it blew my mind. So I found that really, really interesting. Um, also in the Hugh Aston building, which is where you'll be taught, we have the dedicated um, law library. So Kelly, can you just tell us a little bit about what the law library is and kind of what's in there? Yeah, so the law library um, is an opportunity for you to find study uh, a study space, a quiet study space, um, should, should you not have that opportunity at home or actually if you find it easier to study um, in, a, in a more studious environment. Um, so there are um, plenty of computers, books, um, everything that you would normally find in a library, but also there is a separate postgraduate space in the upstairs of the law library um, that is uh, essentially specifically for, for postgraduate um, students very doing professional courses. Very exclusive. It's very nice and calm. Yeah. <laughs> you're, only, you're only allowed there if you are a postgraduate student. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to find your way there. Um, so you will have to ask someone because it's like hidden away, which makes it even yeah, better. Yeah, it's, it's kind of upstairs and then like right in the corner, but it's actually quite a large room. It's plenty, yeah. plenty, plenty of computer spaces. There's postgraduate books in there. Um, and then there's also free um, access to the Law Gazette um, hard copies that you, you're more than welcome to take away um, as well. So, um, yeah, lots of facilities for you in the library. 
Yeah, as well as um, sort of facilities specific to law students, which we've kind of co covered. Um, and I'm, I'm sure in a second, Kelly, you'll cover that the, the digital side that they've now got access to and everything like that. Um, you do also, as a De Montford University student, you get access to our DMU works team. So each faculty has their own bespoke um, uh, careers team. They can support you with um, CV writing. They can help you prepare for interviews. And um, if you are going to sort of law firms to do placements, they can help you apply for those as well. Our placement team, I cannot say enough positive things about our DMU works team. They are amazing. They're available on the ground floor of the Hugh Aston building. And you can make an appointment via my gateway, I believe. And then you can go and speak to them. Um, off kind of the back of that, actually, I think the other thing is, is that you actually, ha we have a careers tutor just for LPC SQE students um, as, as well. So the careers tutor um, has um, dozens of connections with regional and national firms. Um, and again, they can help you with um, your kind of your uh, CV. Um, they can help you with um, applic uh, applying application forms, interviews. Um, but also, some firms come to us directly to advertise the positions that they have available directly to our LPC or SQE students. So that will um, continue um, and will be available for our SQE law grads and our SQE non-law grads as well. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, again, we've got a couple more questions and I can see backstage, I can see some movement from Patty. So I think we'll actually be able to bring her back in a second, which is perfect. Um, we'll just get these questions answered and then there's no freezing, which I'm really happy about. So uh, we've, got a, we've got a question again from Kelly. It's great to see you uh, with these questions, Kelly. If I did the F3 course at, at DMU, would I have to apply to do the exam separately after completing the course or is it um included so if it doesn't make sense no your question makes perfect sense, makes perfect sense. yeah so I, I i assume you were referring to the sqe centralized assessment um the sqe centralized uh, assessment is separate to the sqe um llm course that, that we provide at, at dmu so um obviously we will be provi providing students who join us for the sqe preparatory course the sqe llm we will be providing you with details about how you go about um applying for and undertaking that centralised centralised assessment but it's not um, included um, in, in, in the course fee um, and it's not it's not included um, in, in the course but we will provide you with the details that you need for that. Thank you very much Kelly and Kelly we hope that answers your question <laughs> um, we have it this is confusing the life out of me we have a question from Ellis as well so by sitting um, the and I, I think what I'm going to try and do is bring Patty back for this because this is in relation to the non grad course. Okay, my fingers are crossed. Patty, are you? Yay! Wow! <laughs> she, she, this is amazing. I've tried everything, every oh. single thing. Can you hear me now? Can you? Yeah, we can hear you. This is perfect. And you've got to let me in backstage. <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome into the stream. This is Patty. Patty is one of our senior lecturers in Hi. law as well. Um, thank you. Thank you for just keeping keeping going, Patty, and trying to fix it. Um, so Patty, before we introduce before we introduce your course, I think this is a perfect question for yourself. Um, so we have a question from Ellis. And Ellis wants to know by sitting the non graduate law course will i be able to do a placement for two years and then sit the sqe too so if we hand over to patty and then kelly if you've got anything to add just jump in um yes yeah i don't yeah of course you will um the the non-grad bit it differs in as much that you have to do a block a and in that block a you have to cover the subject areas which are contract law tort law property law um public law equity and trust criminal law yes yeah, just the six we don't do european anymore um so you'll do that in block a and at the end of that block you will have examinations on that and then you will go on to do the block b which is all about the lpc bits you do business law and practice dispute resolution and all of all of that when you go on yes certainly 
<coughs> Hopefully that answers your question, Les. But again, if you do have any, we now have two lovely academics with us. <laughs> We're spoiled for choice now. Um, so just scrolling at the bottom at the moment is the course information that you will need. So if you'd like to find out more information about the solicitors qualifying exam preparation for law graduates, LLM, that is the link that you will need to follow. And I will also pop it in the comments. Um, for now, what we're going to do is give Kelly a very well-earned break. <laughs> so we'll, we'll say uh, goodbye to Kelly for the moment and then we will bring her back in a second. Um, so Patty, similar, because I, I know you've been able to hear everything that's been going on. You just haven't been able to contribute. It's been awful. Um, so Patty, if you can just, similar to what Kelly provided us, um, to start off with an overview to the programme and what course that is replacing, if that's okay. Um, the course itself for the long non-law graduates is the traditional graduate diploma in law that we did at Timothy University. And that, in effect, is what we call the conversion course. It turns your normal degree that you've got, so if you've got one in English or art or whatever it is. Um, I personally did the GDL myself, and I was a nurse for many years, so I had a health studies degree. But it actually converts that health study degree into a law degree, if you like, because you study um, those components um, that I talked about, the contract tort, public law, uh, land trust um, and I did EU and um, tax law as well um, but but it's been shortened since then so that's what the old GDL did and really it's about legal theory that's what we're looking at in, in that rather than the practical bit that the legal practice course gave you um, the, the first block the block A will be really looking at the theory in of the law in contract tort etc um it is a shorter um regime than it is under the gdl the gdl we did it over one academic term over one academic year sorry um so two terms this you will only do really in half in one term so half a year if you like half, half an academic year um the exam itself um it's pretty much going to be problem solving um, like we do in um, our GDL at the moment. So we give a scenario and then we ask um, you to actually advise a client or something like that. So you have to put the, the, the theory, the legal theory down on a piece of paper and say, you know, exactly why you would give that advice to somebody as you're doing those problem solving approaches. And it will be multiple choice questions as well. So it's it's more condensed, if you like, but it, it's like, um, it's, I suppose it's like the old GDL in a new bottle, if you like, because we will be covering many of the, um, most of the actual subject here, um, areas and most of the topics that actually um, went into that um, um you know um gdl course so i would imagine um that i mean i think we've sorted it out now there will be a lot of recorded lectures that we do in fact we do that at the minute and we did it even before we had covid we recorded lectures um and on the gdl they were always recorded prior to um the gdl starting because we also ran a part-time as well as a a, a full-time course and the part-time was distance learning so they only used to come in for a few weekends a year um, and so predominantly they, they had to, to teach themselves if you like online by listening to the lectures um, that we put out there and, and reading the notes etc etc so you will be given lots of guidance um, <clears throat> you know um, you'd be given lots of help we do try and, and you know gear it so that we give you enough information that you can actually get over that hurdle get through block a and then um be able to go on to block b and um succeed at the end of the day basically that's perfect thank you for the overview patty um so just going into a bit more detail and about the modules that they that students will study 
Um, so Kelly gave us a bit of an overview as to what modules, what kind of things, and you did mention it, it's about problem solving. And I don't expect you to go through every module because I know we've well, only got a finite amount of time. No, but, but, like the module I teach on, it's called a tort law. It's the law of tort. And it covers things like negligence and nuisance and trespass and defamation. And, you know, there's lots of different things that come under tort law. You can't study them all. It's impossible. Even on the LLB, we can't get people to... to you know, to study all the topics that would fall into the law of tort. It's just impossible to do. Um, so um, we pick out what what really is specific in that, that, that's really important, and that tends to be around the negligence torts more than anything else. We do the trespass ones as well, but the negligence tort, and because that's by far the biggest thing you would meet in legal practice, in, in practice when if you become a solicitor, um, negligence <clears throat> covers all different things. So, um, and Kelly and I, both of us teach on a, a law and medicine call, uh, course, which we do clinical negligence in. And, you know, um, medical negligence is just a, a huge thing now um, in, in litigation. So um, that's the law of tort. Contract law, we will look, we will be teaching you about what forms of what the formation of a contract is, so how it comes about, whether there's any special rules, they'll be telling you about how the terms in the contract should be. And hopefully, then when you go on to do your legal practice course, it's a long time since I did mine, uh, I have to add, but, but that helps you if you are looking at drafting a contract because you. Um, understand the terms of a contract that is actually needed um, when you are drawing up contracts for anybody, basically. So we go through, you know, all, all the aspects of um, contracts. So it will be about offer and acceptance. It might not mean anything to you at the minute, but it would be if you studied it. Um, contract terms, um, this funny little thing called consideration, which is just about a value for money, really. So you can't get something for nothing that's what um otherwise it can't be a contract um criminal law just says it for itself you cover things like homicide um murder um inchoate offenses there's lots of different things theft burglary all of those things that come under criminal law um land law very important as i heard kelly say um because you have to know the theory of land law um, and th that, of course, is big um, when you actually go out there into the world of a solicitor and it will help you, um, hopefully. And like I said, it's a long time ago since I did my legal practice course, but it should help you th um, actually understand mortgages and forfeiture clauses and all of that sort of thing um, that you would need to, to know um, if you are looking at the legal practice course. Um, we do equity and trust as well. Another thing, you know, that's a big thing. Um, equity covers things like charities, um, constructive trusts, etc. Um, that you would go wills and probate, that all sorts of things that you know would come under that um, sort of umbrella term. And public law really is a bit of politics. <laughs> Uh, but it's how our constitution is run, really. So half of it, public law um, is the same as constitutional and administrative law, really. Um, it's another name for it, another another bottle. But some of it you will have to do on um, look at how the constitution is run, you know, about our parliament being supreme, how we separate the powers at the top so we don't get a, an abuse of power. Um conventions like habits that we do in this country um you know and that's a minefield at the moment with um um things like uh, boris um johnson trying to stop um or to do uh, stop parliament until he actually got the um brexit deal through and of course um that was challenged and he wasn't allowed to do it so, you know, lay, lay Parliament off, basically. I can't remember the name of it. Prerogue, isn't it? Um, and then <laughs> um, you also do a bit of administrative law under that, and that is things like police powers. So we look at powers of the police under that, 
Um, and the judicial review. So judicial review is something that um, it is a court, it's a public court, public law court, and it's where you can challenge the decisions made by those in public authority. So NHS, for instance, county councils, uh, local government, um, you know, ministers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a way of actually challenging a decision made by them. So you're, what you're doing is you're asking the court uh, not to make a different decision particularly, but to say that it's been arrived at um, by um, the wrong process and that they need to go back really and start again and do it lawfully uh, and legally, basically. That's, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Patty. Um, if you'd like more information about the um, SQE LLM for non-law graduates, you will see that we have just popped a link at the bottom. Again, I will pop all of these links into the comments section so you'll be able to click on those and find out a little bit more. Um, thank you for that. I'm going to bring Kelly back now. Um, just before I uh, go on to the next little section, we've got about 15 minutes left. So if you do have any questions on either of these programmes, now is your time to ask them. If you have got the floor, use it. <laughs> ask anything that you would like. Uh, our lovely academics are here to help you. So I think before I we go on to sort of how to apply for these programmes, I think something that we didn't cover in, in the sections was the entry criteria. So Kelly, starting with yourself, what is the entry criteria for the SQE for Law Graduates LLM? Yeah, so it is a 2-2 two -two, uh, degree classification overall with a um, in a law degree, um, with preferably a 2-1 in uh, the following subjects. So English legal systems, contra uh, contract, tort, public law, land law, trusts and criminal law. Uh, so that's the entry criteria for the SQE law grad. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, and Patty, the entry criteria for the non-law grad. Um, again, you um, it is, I'm, I hope I'm right in saying this, Kelly, um, it's 2-2 two, two and above. Yeah. Yes, in two. any subject. Yeah, in, in, yeah, in, in any subject. Any yeah. subject. So if you did, I don't know, art and design, fine art, in your undergraduate degree or if you did um engineering and you want a huge career change <laughs> then yes then the, the non-law grad program will be um yeah. will be there for you so and the, it works <laughs> <laughs> um so we have got a few questions so just i'm conscious of time so we will get we'll get a few of those answered and then we'll go on to the other sections if that's okay um, so, Patty, this is a question from you from Kia. Um, so, yeah. what would you recommend the best route for, sol for soliciting is? Would it be the GDL or the SQE non law grad? Um, to be honest, now I would say it is to go for the SQE in place of the GDL. Okay. Um, it would probably be a bit different advice if you were looking to do um, the degree as a um, um, going into the graduate law degree, then you'd probably want to go for the tried and tested course at the minute, which is the LPC route. Um, but for the for certainly for the non graduates, I think you should start um, off as you mean to go on, really. And as you know, the whole thing's going to change. So go for the, the the SQE. Thank you very much for that, Patty. Um, I think this is this is a, a great question from Ellis. So, will students be better off by doing the grad course versus the non-grad course, as they would have the three additional elective modules? Um, so, I'm not sure who wants to take this one. Um, I don't mind mind taking it. Um, I think there's there's kind of two the, two ways. Well, firstly, the answer is is no, not necessarily, not 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 really. They won't be any better off. Um, so, when I did my legal practice course at, at, at DMU. Um, I, I studied three electives that I never even touched upon in in legal practice uh, when I was when I was a solicitor. So I was a solicitor doing lots of personal injury, clinical negligence work. I didn't touch that elective 
um, at all when I was in you know, I was in practice. The second uh, thing that I would say is that when you are in practice, you will do a number of different seats in different areas. So that can be it's usually between four and six. So you will have experience whilst you're doing your um, placements in doing different areas of law. So I wouldn't say that students who are doing the grad course just because they get to do three elective modules are any better off um, necessarily. Thank you for that, Kelly. Now, this is I think this is going to be a question that challenge <laughs> tests you both. Uh, when does the SQE start in 2021? Now we know it's September. <laughs> is it as September? as much as we know at the moment? The the date that I have is the fourth of October. Oh, yeah. it is. It's the same so, as for undergraduates. Yeah, I think it's just a couple of a couple of days later um, than than the end of September. But I believe it's the fourth of October is the first week. Um, See, I thought I was going to catch you both out with that question. I thought that was going to be the one. <laughs> You might catch us out a bit because I'm, I'm not sure yet, Kelly, are you, whether they'll have an induction course the week before that? I think, so the, induction is, is, I think the induction course is the 4th of October, yeah. is my understanding. The, the only reason I'm saying it is it because our undergraduates, um, their first year, they do the freshers' year the week before that. Yeah. Um, so they start, and also the graduate diploma does at the moment, it, mm. it has an induction week. Yeah. week before um you you will be kept up to date via email on everything yeah. so so 4th of october is the the date um which the sqe starts which it's exciting less than 12 months to go oh, yeah. um another question from oh sorry another question from ellis so ellis wants to know if i was to do the um the non-grad course would I have to do an additional course to get the skills of legal practice? Um, I think I've touched upon this already, so if mm. you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll take this. The The idea is behind the reasoning, um, and this is from the SRA, um, is that you'll actually learn those skills in your kind of placement. So if that might be just one placement, but you did it for, for two years, or it might be up to six placements, but the idea is you learn those skills whilst you're doing your placements um, so that you should then be able to pass the SQE2 from the skills that you've learned in practice. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, so this ties into sort of like the next point, which is how to apply. Um, so what is the deadline for applying for the SQE law grad course? And then what we'll do is we'll go into how to apply if that's OK. So, um, Kelly, would you? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover this and then Patty can cover how, how to apply. But um, there, there is no deadline, um, as, as so to speak, that actually we, we, we take students up to um, kind of very close to the start of the course. However, there is a limit on the amount of students that we will take. And once we have um, reached that cap, students will be put on a waiting list and you will only get a place if someone drops out. Um, so... And the, and the numbers are low um, and I think I said this at the start of the kind of live that actually our postgraduate courses are very popular and we often reach the cap and there's often a waiting list so even though there isn't a deadline in place if you are planning on applying to it as we would we would suggest that you do that sooner rather than later so that you don't miss out yeah absolutely I'll second that Perfect. And then just going into Patty, if a student, similar to what we're seeing in the comments, if a student wanted to apply, how would they do it? Is it similar to a PGT course where they apply on the DMU website or is it slightly different for these programmes? I believe it's all through law caps, isn't it, Kelly? Yeah. It's all through law caps. Um, so they would have to um, apply to law caps and then um, they will, you know, Put them and get, take them off to admissions if that's you know if or yeah get them a place offered yeah. so is it similar so is it like a supporting statement what's the kind of the process is that how it works it's a bit like UCAS yeah. um yeah. But it just yeah. a different name um so yes yeah, supporting statement um the the this the study route they've already taken um and then um, a reference as well which is usually an academic reference yeah yeah 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, we have got about five minutes left, so I can see that we've got some comments in. So we'll jump into the, the Q&A section. So please, if you do have any questions, drop them in the comments box now, um, as we'd love to get as many answered as possible. So the next question is, what is DMU's plan for the GDL slash SQA? Slightly confused with the dates. So as far as I'm aware, Patty, the yeah. graduate diploma in law is no longer available to students. Absolutely. You cannot, okay. you cannot study at De Montfort University the graduate diploma in law anymore. Um, after next year, um, when our distance learners, because they started this year, but they do it over two years, after next year, the GDL um, will not be here anymore. It will only be the SQE. Um, and therefore, yeah. So the That's SQE the option. starts on the 4th of October and there is no um, option um, to go, if you come into DMU, to do the GDL yeah. at all. Yeah, so it is, it's a, it's, it's a, it is a very confusing time. So um, the GDL has, as we mentioned, has completely gone and you can no longer apply for that. And the SQE for non-law graduates has come in place of that. The LPC, because it is such a long-standing course, is being phased out slowly. Um, and the SQE for law graduates is coming in replacement of that. So that's why we'll have the intake for the LPC and the SQE for law grads at the same time next year just because it has been such a long-standing course. Um, and we need to build the knowledge of what the SQE uh, for law grads is, and that's why we put on this live stream. So we do hope you found it informative. Um, so we've got a question from John. Thank you very much for watching, John. And John wants to know, what is the best route for a current GDL student completing um, in 2021? So would you advise to then go on to the SQE for law grads? Yeah, so essentially that, John, you would have two options available to you. You could choose either the SQE LLM for law grads um, because you've completed the GDL, which means that you've completed the subjects that you need to complete, um, or you could choose to do the legal practice course. Um, as I, you may have, may or may or not, may or may not have heard me mention this earlier, but um, in regards to kind of which one should you do, that ultimately is, is a choice for you. Some firms are only accepting um, SQE from um, 2021. Some firms are still only accepting LPC and some firms don't care. Um, so it depends on the firms that you're looking for, but also the, the type of modules that you're looking, looking at. So um, the best thing to do is to do as much research as, as possible. But one thing to be aware of is that the LPC um, only runs full time. It, there is no part time provision after this year. Thank you very much um, for that, Kelly. So we have around one minute left. So um, I'm going to ask you both a question whilst we see if there's any more comments that we can answer. Um, so this is one to, to, to both of you. What advice would you give to students thinking about undertaking the SQE? So, Patty, if I can come to you first and then Kelly, I'll drop the question as well to you well practically um i would make sure it's what you actually want to do i think that's because it's it's not cheap as going to university isn't cheap and if you um you're not really sure that you want this as a career um then really think about it i think um I have to say, and I'd be lying if I, I said anything different, I, I have a feeling the figures are at the moment that there are 25,000 law graduates looking for places and only about 6,000 jobs usually um, on the legal concourse. Now, the law degree and the, F, the F, what you learn on the SQE uh, and things like that are good for, for going into other platforms. I know lots of people who've actually gone into the legal departments in hospitals and and firms and things like that who um, have not qualified as a solicitor, but they they do the complaints and things like that. So I'm not trying to put you off doing uh, the degree. In fact, I, I would encourage it. It's the best thing that I ever did. However, um, like I said, it is expensive and you will not, um, you know, you have to work at it you have to work hard at it you have to be committed um it takes a lot of your time there's no doubt about it um and 
you have to be organized with your life i think um and so i would say really think about it before you actually um you know make a commitment if you like um and that is not to try and put you off because i would love you all to come honestly <laughs> i'm not trying to put you off but but it is something to consider um you mm. you know you know what you're doing i think uh, and in this climate as well at the moment you know um, it is something to consider so um that's my advice are you going to be more upbeat kelly <laughs> um, I, I would second that but I would just add um, that if you're going to be undertaking the SQE just something that not all students are aware of that that is the route to become a solicitor it is not the route to become a barrister so if you wanted so I think the other thing that you need to be clear in your mind of is do you want to be a solicitor or do you want to be a barrister um, because kind of the courses that you need to take will dictate uh, oh, sorry the whatever what profession you want to enter will dictate the courses that you need to do um so so i i would i would second that but but yeah as patty said i don't regret doing my legal practice course um or my undergraduate degree both of which i did at dmu so i am dmu alumni i am living proof that even um in even though there's a large amount um of applicants um and graduates for positions that actually it is entirely possible um, and as I've already said you know we have a careers advisor a careers tutor sorry um, who and lot, a lot of firms uh, come to us to advertise their positions um, so you kind of sometimes get first dibs as well and I got my training contract through De Montfort University as well so um, I'm living proof that that works as well yeah it's like more upbeat than Patty <laughs> No, no. I mean, the program stuff is really good, but I think mm. um, I'm conscious of the climate that we're in at the moment, and people being disappointed at the end of it. And mm. Kelly is just proof that you can do it. But like I say, you can't just go into it half-heartedly. You've got to be committed to do it. I think. And mm. you know, if you are committed, yes. if you are committed, if you are motivated, if you are passionate then there's no reason why you can't get a job in the legal profession at the end of at the end of it either of the mm. course the lpc yeah. the sqe yeah. llm law grad or the QE, llm non-law grad but you've got to be prepared to put the work in to get there i think um is it, my it, it, it's it's a bit like the gym that's what i say you if you kind of sort of try you kind of sort of get results um <laughs> but if you kind of pull effort in at the gym we'll start to see results pretty quickly aren't it? And the so, courses are a bit like that. That would be a perfect way to end it. However, we do have one more final question. So, um, what is the tuition fee for the SQE? Which I think is a very valid question as well. Have you got it, Kerry? Um, it's seven thousand pounds. Because it is an LLM course. One thing to note is that uh, for eligible students, um, it. Um, there is student finance funding available. So like I said, for eligible students, you can get student finance funding because it is a master's course. So that's one of the benefits of um, it being a master's course. Not only do you get a master's, but also it attracts that funding. Perfect, thank you very much, Kelly. Um, if you would like more information on the solicitors qualifying exam preparation for law graduates, please email Kelly. Um, Kelly, please correct me if I've got your email not right here. So it's kelly.hughes at dmu.ac.uk. And if you would like more information on the solicitors qualifying exam um, preparation for non law grads, please email Patty Healy, which is phealy at dmu.ac.uk. Is that correct, Patty? That's absolutely perfect, yeah. Fabulous. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to Kelly and Patty for joining us today and answering all those questions. Thank you, Patty, for persevering um, and getting on to us, for getting on here for us. Um, it was Kelly mainly. I think she's been the star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Um, a, a, a huge thank you to everybody that has watched the live stream today. Uh, we really appreciate all your comments, all your questions, um, and we hope you found it informative. Uh, Kelly and Patty are now going to be jumping over for the last 55 minutes of the online chat. So if you do want those more detailed conversations, if you want a little bit more advice, then pop over to the online chat where um, Kelly and Patty will both be waiting for you. Until then, 
Again, thank you very much for watching. Um, and we hope to see you at DMU soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.